Welcome back to Higurashi no Noku Koro ni. So today we are continuing on to chapter 6, 7. I'm not sure what chapter we're on. <sighs> we're getting close though. It's all coming together. A week until the Watanagashi, Aksa's in town. Things are going good. Rika. A Hanyu filled in Rika. So let's see where we go. Now she has to tell everybody. Whatever is going on. Rika, you are behaving normally this morning. Do you think so? Am I acting strange? I, I don't know how to say it, but you seem much more mature today. That's because she's like an alcoholic 200 year old or whatever you want to call it. Satoko, please don't mess around. I don't feel like it. About a week, counting from today, huh? Satoko gave me a perplexed look. Maybe she thought I didn't feel well. I want to talk to Keiichi and the others, including Satoko, but I don't know how or where to begin. Just begin. We all like to joke around a lot, so they might not take me seriously. Reina seems to already be cued in on this. How can I get them to understand the danger I'm in? Infiltrate. Good morning to you, Chi-sensei. Oh, you're here as well, coach. That's what you do. Good morning. Good morning, Satoko, Rika. Oh my. Is that a headband for maids that you're wearing? That's against school regulations. You will be punished. Dr. Irie, stop acting like that at school. Coach, Rika doesn't seem to be feeling well this morning. May you check on her over, please? Oh, what's the matter? Did you catch cold? I still don't know how to tell my friends, but Irie at least is on our side. Maybe I can talk to him more directly. If I keep thinking about it, I'll still be thinking at the end of the day. You just gotta say something, girl. Just gotta say it. Maybe I'll start with him. Han, you nodded as if saying that was a good idea. Oh, Satoko, Satoko, oh, let's play a trick on Keiji. Let's do something to his chair. What, Han, you? Oh, ho, ho. please, it's a trap, not a trick. I'll teach you how to set a trap for Keiji. Hanyu and Satoko ran to the classroom. Hanyu must have left on purpose. I have to use this chance she's given me. Ire, can I talk to you in the nurse's office? Sure, that's fine. Let's go there. Ire probably thinks I'm going to talk to him about Hinamizawa syndrome, so he agreed to go somewhere people couldn't hear. If there's any change in my physical condition, it could be a sign of something very serious. Even if it's just a simple cold, Iria is very concerned about my health. What's wrong? Are you feeling sick? Iria, I'm going to tell you something odd, but I want you to take it seriously. It's a very important matter. I gave Irie the sternest look I've ever shown him as I spoke. Irie usually acts like an idiot, but he can be an adult when he needs to be. <laughs> Seeing the expression on my face, Irie started to look more grave himself. How do I start? Okay. Irie, I'm the Queen Carrier, right? Yes. The parasite that lives in your body is different from everyone else's. What happens if I die? Like I told you before, something terrible will happen. No. To be precise, we believe something terrible will happen. After all, it's impossible to verify until you die. However, 
Several cases involving social brain parasites similar to those of the Hinomizawa syndrome have shown that the death of the queen carrier can cause mass suicides or riots. That would be Takano's area of expertise. Maybe you should ask her instead. I don't know much about it myself. In other words, Takano knows better than anybody that if I die, something terrible will happen. More than ever, I don't know why Takano wants to kill me. There's no way I can figure it out myself. Ida is here with me right now. Maybe he'll know. I should ask him. Irie, please don't ask any questions and just answer. Would there be something to gain from killing me? What? Kill you, Rika? Who would- Irie, you aren't supposed to ask any questions, remember? Sorry. No, I can't think of anything. There isn't anyone who would benefit from your death. I repeat, if something happens to the Queen Carrier, all infected persons will reach the terminal stage within 48 hours. That's what makes the syndrome so dangerous, which by the way we know isn't true. Because we've seen it. We've seen her die and it never happened. The scale of the disaster will be far greater than any individual case of paranoia, paranoia or psychosis. Would anyone profit from that disaster? No way! Killing you is tantamount to killing all 2,000 villagers. Nobody would consider that for a minute, even as a joke. If I die, all the residents of Hinamisa will go insane and may even kill each other. What a perfect ending for people who are descended from demons, huh? Could that be what Takano wants? Since she always talks about dangerous and bizarre things, it's obvious she enjoys cruelty. Okay, so if you get that much, if you get that she enjoys cruelty, why would you be shocked that she's the one behind it? I just don't understand. She always talks about how she wants to witness with her own eyes the raw brutality of the man-eating demons she read about in the dark history of Onigafuchi Village. Once again, red flag. Learn how to read them, Rika. It's possible that she wants me dead just so all the villagers would develop terminal symptoms. Of course, that's in the worst case. So if something happens to you, there's an emergency measure we're supposed to follow. An emergency measure? I've never heard of anything like that. I've never told you this before. It's a rather unpleasant measure, so that's why I've never mentioned it. The ADA's Institute's top priority is protecting the Queen. But if you die, and all infected persons develop terminal symptoms, we're supposed to go ahead with this contingency plan. That's understandable. If all 2,000 villagers were to go insane, there's no guarantee the devastation will remain within the village. Obviously, it's a good idea to be prepared for the worst case scenario. There are all these things called emergency manuals. And among them, the one for the worst possible disaster, in other words, in the event of your death, is called Emergency Manual 34. What happens with that? Before all the villagers go insane, they'll be exterminated. To be exact, a special unit from the self-defense force will seal off Hinamizawa and kill the villagers using poison gas. I've... Does she not remember that? Maybe not, because she has a hard time remembering things near her death. I've never heard of that before either. Sorry. I don't really like talking about it. I've been interested in things that happen before I die, but not in things that happen after I'm dead. This disaster only takes place after I die. I had no idea that something like this occurs every single time. It doesn't. Or rather, I'm the cause. If the enemy is capable of erasing an entire village, then killing a little girl like me won't be a problem at all. Hanyu is telling me to talk to everyone, but can I really stand against an opponent like that? That's what I've been saying. Anyway, the existence of this emergency manual changes everything. 
Takano's motive doesn't make any sense. How? I thought her goal was for all the villagers to go mad and slaughter each other like demons. But according to what Irie said, that wouldn't even happen. The villagers will all be killed before it does. I'm not Takano, so I can't be sure. But I don't think that would be fun for her. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to kill me for that purpose. Especially since we've known each other for such a long time. She doesn't give a rat's ass about you. Do you think it's possible for Takano and the mountain dogs to kill me? Don't be stupid. That's just impossible. Takano's number one priority is to protect you, and one of the mountain dog's main duties is to watch over you. That's simply unthinkable. Irie, even so, supposing Takano wanted to kill me, can you think of a motive for her doing so? No, I can't. She knows better than anybody about the dangers of the Queen Carrier. Besides, as you're well aware, she's very passionate about our research into this syndrome. Killing you would put an end to that. But Irie... Hinamisawa syndrome is supposed to be eradicated within three years, isn't it? In other words, you're going to destroy the disease. What does Takano think about that? Now you're hitting the home, home run, baby. Now you're getting there. Hmm. Well... Hinamisawa syndrome is the target of treatment for me. But for Takano, it's research material. Actually, she's strongly against the plan to eradicate it within three years, and she has even made a trip to Tokyo to request an indefinite extension of the project from the board of directors. She wasn't successful, though. So what you're saying is that Takano wants to continue her research, but the syndrome is going to be eradicated within three years, so Takano is going to lose the subject of her research, isn't she? I guess you can say that. I think I see something here. The EDA Institute isn't a small organization. It's being managed by a lot of people and it receives a great deal of funding. That's the only way they can even research the syndrome. So, if the EDA Institute is planning to put an end to the research within three years, there really isn't much Takano can do about it. If it's all going to end anyway, then maybe she wants to shake things up? N no way! Something like that can't possibly happen! But you know how she is, right? She would do it. She would kill me if she wanted to, don't you think? No way. No way. Something as horrible as that just isn't possible. I feel like I'm starting to see Takano's motive, but it seems like there must be more. After all, the project will continue for at least three additional years. It's possible that during those three years, Takano's request will be approved, and the research will get an extension. In other words, the research is guaranteed to continue for a minimum of three more years. Given those three years, why is she so desperate now? Besides, I'm always killed in June 1983. The date may change a bit, but the month won't. That must be the result of her strong willpower. It would be one thing if her research was being terminated immediately. She still has three years, yet she's already getting desperate. The motive is too weak. Dude, when you have a psycho on your hand, the motive doesn't need to be that strong. She must be possessed of the strong conviction that it has to be June 1983. After that, no matter how I questioned Irie, he kept repeating that there was no way Takano would kill me. So I didn't see how he could be any more help. However, if I'm able to explain Takano's motive, then I think he will be my ally. But for now, I think this is all I can do with him. Oh, don't. I feel like talking to Tomatake is such a bad idea. He's like head over heels for that crazy bitch. I'm going to talk to Tomatake too. Tomatake is a lot closer to Tokyo than Irie is. Hopefully Aksa is going to come. Aksa will believe her now. Maybe he can tell me something Irie can't. By the way, I have to point out that it is not Aksa's fault. All Rika had to do was pick up a fucking phone and say, Hey, 
Remember those prophecies that I told you? Yeah, they all came true. So, once again, Rika being lazy is part of her problem. And I'm not blaming the last 100 years. I'm blaming the first, like, at least 30, where she could have tried everything and anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, how were these things not tried before? I don't understand. Also, the whole happy death day thing where you follow everybody around and try to figure out the suspect. I hope I can learn some important things from him too. Enough to convince him that Takano has a strong mo enough motive to kill me. Tomotake should be visiting Hinamizawa around this time. He spends a lot of time with Takano, but he often takes walks by himself to enjoy photographing birds too. I'll try finding him when he's not with Takano and talking to him then. Although, Tomotake does have strong feelings towards Takano. I'm worried he won't listen to me as seriously as Irie did. The thing about Tomotake is he could literally go back to Takano and be like, Hey, by the way, Rika came up to me with this weird... Yeah. Whereas nobody else would. Thank you very much. I'm going back to the classroom. If you find out something about Takano, please let me know. Rika! Why do you think Takano's trying to kill you? You haven't developed symptoms, have you? If you're doubting me, then would you like to run a test right now? I said some terrible things out of the blue, so I don't blame him for becoming suspicious. However, thanks to the rapid diagnostic test Iria had developed at this point, it was easy to prove with a syringe. I just had to submit to the needle to show that I hadn't developed terminal symptoms. The results were negative. Of course. It's just impossible for Takano. Impossible! Maybe now Irie believes that there's a possibility that Takano's trying to kill me. I left the nurse's office. I hope Irie will grow curious about Takano and try to find something out about her. So, how was it, Rika? Did you find out anything? Oh, well, yes and no. It's hard to say, but there are a couple of interesting things. One is how the EDA Institute is trying to eradicate the syndrome within three years. Takano doesn't like the idea. She went to Tokyo to petition for the continuation of her research, but they refused. That might cause her to become desperate. The second is a thing called Emergency Manual 34. I love how they're just chatting about this in the hallway. Supposedly, if I die, would Han you know this? That will be executed and the whole village will be murdered by poison gas. Aww. They say that when I die, the villagers will develop terminal symptoms, right? First I thought Takano wants me dead because she wants to see that happen. But since there is such an emergency manual, the village will be gone long before then. So that can't be your motive. Every time I ask Irie, all he says is that it's not possible. According to him, Takano understands the importance of the situation better than anybody. Therefore, she doesn't have any reason to kill me. Oh, I know. I've only asked Irie so far. It's possible we can learn more information or wisdom from other people too. That's right! Unless we bring everyone's power together, a miracle won't occur! We need that miracle to defeat our enemies. It's almost lunchtime! That'll be a good chance to talk to everyone! Though... The problem is whether or not they'll take it seriously when I talk to them. Once I start talking about the Secret Society Tokyo, they'll obviously ask what manga I'm talking about. I need to figure out a good way to discuss it so I avoid misunderstandings. Oh, I think it'll be better to be honest with them without really thinking too much about it. Yeah, Hanyu has seen Rika literally tell Keiji up front and he believed her. Do you really think so? Mm-hmm. Let's just try. Tell them in the way I'll teach you and I'm sure they'll take you seriously and help out. I'm still not sure, but Hanyu seems very confident. Hanyu has spent her life observing various people. 
She had never talked to Mion directly before this life, but she knows her better than I do. I talked to everyone during lunchtime in the way that Hanyu taught me. No, not there. Hmm. That sure is interesting. And then? Huh? Oh my god. I know! You're so talented! If you work on it a little more, you could end up with a really great manga! God damn it, KG. It's funny how she said that, and that's literally what happened. I don't know what to say! I thought maybe something was bothering you because you haven't been looking good since this morning. Why didn't you come to me first? See? I told you that you could count on them. Oh, C count on them, huh? Ah, <sighs> it all comes down to how you put it, I guess. This old man can create application forms, make rough drafts, ink tone, draft backgrounds, typeset and proofread, take your manuscripts to the printer, publish, distribute, and support. He could do it all. Hmm. <laughs> Good thing you came to him. Oh, you sure had great, Mion. You know what? That's actually not a bad idea. You can be a cartoonist, an editor, a publisher, and a bookstore owner all at once! Really? My dad says things like that too! Is doing everything yourself in style now? Oh, I'm curious about what kind of comic Michan would write. I'm curious. Hold on. You're all getting sidetracked. Thanks, Satoko. Let's help Rika out, all right? Oh, thanks, Satoko. I told them about all the secrets surrounding Kinamizawa. Oh. I like this. I like this. This is actually a very clever way to do it. I told them that I wanted to write a comic book and that I needed their help to decide on a few things. If I spoke to them about this normally, they may question my sanity, but to see things change this dramatically with just a little preface... Hanyu, you're pretty good. Anyway, so if this queen carrier dies, the village will be destroyed because of some emergency measure? That's the focus, right? My goodness, if there really was someone like that, she'd better be very careful. One mistake and poof! The whole village would disappear. We should just capture her? <laughs> That's a very good idea. I don't know why you haven't done that. <laughs> Wrap her in a bubble. And put her in storage or something. She gets killed, right? If they know her death will create a disaster, why would they kill her? Why? That's just it. The bad people at the research center know what will happen, yet they're still trying to kill me. I mean, the Queen Carrier. I just can't think of a good explanation for why. I kind of see an outline for the motive, though. Can they actually find a hint without knowing any of the actual details? <laughs> That's so simple! The fact that the entire village gets destroyed if the queen carrier dies is the motive in of itself. Exactly! Exact Neon. Thank you. Thank you. Rika, you should feel ashamed for being 200 whatever years old. With another thousand plus year old person with you. Neon laughed as she casually voiced what was on her mind. wants to research the disease more, so there's no way she'd put an end to it herself. Oh, That's not a big problem. Just set some masterminds pulling strings behind the villain. That or some villain who's just using that villain. A villain who wants to use Takano? Listen, if the queen dies, the village is plunged into chaos. To cover it up, a mass execution operation is carried out. 
Fundamentally, this is a countermeasure against the worst possible outcome, a trump card that must never be played. Because playing it causes a disaster of its own, even if it settles the previous situation. That was a very confusing sentence. Huh. You're right. In politics, they always talk about who takes responsibility for this and who resigns for that. If, in fact, a mass execution like that was to take place, someone would have to explain that and take responsibility. KG! Okay, I see what they're doing now. Well, it's a secret operation, so I'm sure it wouldn't be made public. But there will be many people questioned within that Tokyo organization, that's for sure. Isn't that a motive for qu killing the Queen Carrier? Oh? Why? Who benefits from such chaos? There are plenty of people. Think about it. The wind always blows in one direction. For some people, it's a headwind, and for others, it's a tailwind. There are always people who gain and people who lose. I see. Ho ho ho. My brain finds this quite stimulating. In other words, if someone like that happens, there will be people who have to take responsibility for it. Oh, is this all a fucking political thing because the war people don't want to move on from the war? Is that what this is? I, if that's the case, I really prefer Takano just being a psycho. That is so much more interesting. I don't give a shit about you stupid political people and your anti-war crap. I don't! <sighs> that's right! There are always different powers and factions within an organization. Especially if it's a huge mastermind organization like this Tokyo. I'm sure many different people have their hidden agendas. In other words, there are plenty of people who want to rule over others. And there are plenty of reasons to assassinate the Queen Carrier. Are you saying that, uh, I mean, even if the bad person doesn't have a reason, that there could be people who have reasons to kill the Queen Carrier in Tokyo? <laughs> there you go, you've got it. Also, what about this backstory for the bad person at the research center? She wants to keep her research going, but it's already been decided it'll end within three years, right? So this researcher is about to see all her research turn to naught. That means all the fruits of her life's work are about to be ruined and she's under extreme duress. Not only that, I think her pride must be hurt too. That's true. The value of this, the research this bad person has spent half her life on isn't being acknowledged by the people at the top, and they even told her it'd be shut down within three years. That must be tough. It's hard when other people deny that which you've worked so hard to accomplish. Rika! Uh, yeah, I know. Amazing. My friends really are the best. This is starting to sound like a real motive for Takano. the first thing she'd do would be to appeal to her bosses. She'd probably try, try to explain how Tokyo, how important and valuable her research is. And ask them not to shut it down. But well, if Tokyo just said, yeah, got it, continue your research, we'll increase your budget too, that wouldn't be much of a comic. <laughs> so the bosses at Tokyo are sure to turn her request down hard and thoroughly. They tell her that her work is a waste of time and that she be scrapped immediately or something like that. Edie, <laughs> I love how they're this. This is fantastic. Also, literally just reading this section is all I needed, rather than those five hours of political talk. Just Mion saying that one sentence explained everything. <laughs> EDA told me that Takano had gone to Tokyo to request an extension on the research. He also said her request was denied. Ho ho ho! Can you imagine her anger at having her life's work mocked by her superiors? There are then only two options open to her. Satoko? 
What are they? That's easy. She can cry herself to sleep over it. Or she can take revenge. Keiichi and Satoko each give each other a high five. Well, lying down and taking it wouldn't be very interesting either. In that case, the villainous re researcher, who loved her research more than anything, starts growing desperate and believing she should at least end it herself, rather than letting someone else end it for her. All because of her pride. Oh! And that's where the hidden agenda from Tokyo comes in! No way! You mean that idea that someone will gain when the village is thrown into disaster is another force to take responsibility? Exactly! You know what? It kind of sounds like the whole myth of the Watanagashi, like, sacrificing someone and someone else taking the, the sin. It, it actually sounds like that. Which is cool, but I hate the politics. Exactly! The villainous researcher is depressed after having her life's work rejected. But by riling up her up in the right way, they can cause a tragedy in the village without soiling their own hands. Then they can take their time investigating and demanding responsibility. Well done! See? That's right! <laughs> There's more. This villain is depressed after having her life's work rejected, right? So then, one of the young leaders plotting to kick another member of Tokyo down and climb the ladder dispatches, dispatches his own agent to entice this villain. She's depressed because her reason for existing was trampled on, right? If someone tells her that he believes her and such, she'll fall for it easily. The stronger a person's pride is, the easier they'll fall for that kind of encouragement. That means the bad person is simply being used by her evil masterminds. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. She still enjoyed it quite a lot in the last chapter. Well, this happens a lot in action shows. You know how, like, someone devotes his life to an evil organization, but after one mistake he gets eliminated? But in this story, the evil researcher has to be eliminated for sure, right? For the masterminds, there's no point in letting her stick around. <laughs> That's right. So this poor bad person, she's th she thinks she has gotten an evil little part to play, but at the end, her life's work is insulted, she gets used by the masterminds, and after all that, she gets killed. Although she's a bad person, people may sympathize with her for what she has to go through. I don't. She's a bitch. But I guess that's what makes the story interesting. If, you, if you're telling me that you were trying to get me to sympathize with her, I don't. She's a bitch. She want, may I remind you that she wanted to dissect Satoko while she was still alive. That's Satoko, that cute little blonde girl right there. And she doesn't give a shit about the cure. And she was laughing like a crazy bitch when people were getting murdered. Maybe we can use that in the next issue. Hanyu and I could only listen to them talk. They're truly amazing. They really are. It is very possible, especially if I think about Takano's character. Come to think of it, Irie kept repeating, that isn't possible a whole lot. Which means that those words could be a reflection of how possible it might be. I'm sure my friends can answer that question. I'm going to ask them, so let's ask them! Oh, Then why is she so desperate when she still has three years left? That doesn't matter. It really doesn't make a difference if you're getting executed tomorrow or three days later, right? It's just a matter of the length of her probation. This bad person doesn't feel like she has three years left. She feels that she's been sentenced to die in three years. That's just what the mastermind wants. They're the ones controlling this bad person. I think it's the masterminds who want to destroy this village at the particular time, not the bad person. Oh, but she, like I said, you better not try to make me feel sorry for Takano because you were the ones that made her start laughing like a crazy psychotic bitch at the end of the last chapter. And enjoy 
ripping Rika's intestines out while she was still alive. Let us remind you of that. I'm just reminding you, people, so you don't feel any sympathy for this villain. This is a huge operation, you know? It has to succeed. The death of the Queen Carrier isn't their only key to success. Whoever's at the top has to decide to go through with the emergency measure. The more they talk, the more it feels incredibly impossible without Aksa. Which makes sense. But even so, Aksa really can't do that much. He can't go that high in government. The responsibility issue after the operation is side, they have to take care of things like preparation. Or rather... They have to figure out the perfect time to do the most damage. After calculating all that, I think they're going to get on with the operation now that the project only has three years left. So in the end, after this bad person gets used, she's eliminated? She's the villain, but I feel sorry for her. No! Ah, uh, I see. Oh. Oh, okay. Let me move on to the most important thing. To defeat them, how can the Queen Carrier Girl fight back? She's the main character in my story. Huh? That sounds interesting. So the girl they're trying to kill has to run from the evil people, right? It depends on how you serialize it. If you want a long series, coming up with new pursuers and assassins one after another will let you go on for a long time. Oh, if possible, we want a short-term and concentrated series. <laughs> I burst out laughing at Hanyu's metaphor. Okay then, we just have to take care of this bad person quickly and shoot for a happy ending. It's more exciting to fight than none. But the main character is just an ordinary little girl, right? How can she fight? <laughs> Girls nowadays aren't powerless. She might appear to be cute, weak girl. But she has a secret hidden power. She's the S-rank hunter with the blood of royalty. And her nickname is the Ebony Fallen Angel. Okay, now you're getting into a... Uh, unhelpful. Oh, That sounds like the lame original character is some middle schooler. Hey, Neon. What's wrong? Did you have a stomachache or something? <coughs> Fine. This old man's just not talented enough. Mion, you can do it. Though when you read that manga ten years from now, it may be so bitter you writhe with agony. Oh, I don't know exactly what Mion's trying to say. But anyway, the main character is a weak little girl and she doesn't have any special weapons. If anything, she's good at acting innocent. Oh, so she's mean and she abuses me with spicy food. That sounds good. I'll try that starting tonight. Oh. I see. So she's just a regular girl, huh? But a story where a character like that beats... <laughs> exactly. Such a conspiracy is gonna be difficult. No way, no way. It's impossible. She couldn't win with the at least gathering a variety of weapons and skills to operate a radio and a helicopter. Either that or, pro or a professional survivalist who underwent special forces training with the so Soviets. That or someone capable of causing confusion in the ranks with just a truck and a few weapons once they're in the jungle. I have a feeling that if Mion and Satoko were the main character's friends, that'd solve the problem right there. Huh? This old man? <laughs> sure. If he was a character, it'd change the whole story. My fighting techniques and leadership skills are unparalleled. Plus, if the story pl took place here in this village, my familiarity with the area is top notch too. Besides, anyone who makes an enemy of Satoko is as good as dead. Ain't that right? I don't know what kind of secret unit this bad person has, but they are nothing compared to my traps. Dude, they have sniper rifles. They have sniper rifles. <laughs> Just saying, but whatever. If the main character and I bar barricaded ourselves in the hills, no enemy could lay his fingers on her. 
Yep. If she holds up a Satoko in the hills behind us, then assailants will need to either a bombardment capable of crossing the whole thing, or her... I have no idea what that is. Even if they led with that before entering the mountain, they'd still take on severe casualties. Furthermore, I'd be commanding the operations. Well, her assailants better be prepared for casualties on pars. I have no idea what these things are. They must be war things. Right, Satoko? Oh, they better bring a nuclear warhead if they want to fight me in the hills. True, Satoko would be amazing in the hills. But are you sure you can defeat the mountain? Oh, bad person's helpers? They're professionals, you know. Surprise attacks and traps are effective against anyone. The Vietnam War is also a good example. Uh, yeah, gorilla. A multitude of traps set by someone who knows the area well will go a very long way. Are you saying Satoko's traps would work on them too? Of course! Not only that, they'd be very effective. The purpose of traps isn't just to ensnare their victims. They'd also make people extremely afraid. They're professionals, so they'll be extra careful. Therefore, their commander will become indecisive. He will have to decide whether to go into his hills or not. That means we gain more time. Ha! Why is he standing behind... So they would need at least a bombardment to capture us. But this isn't a war, so they probably wouldn't go that far. I definitely don't think that's possible. Anyway... Mion is a professional when it comes to deciding on tactics. And she's saying that Satoko's traps will be more than effective, even against the mountain dogs. That's very reassuring. This is starting to go a little unbelievable to me, but whatever. I knew it was going to happen this way because teenage girls and one guy versus professional sniper army people. The flip side of traps is they can only be used to defend, and it takes a long time to set them up. Also, traps don't discriminate. Satoko's hills meet all the requirements, though. Why is Hanyu there? That's true! Nobody goes into those hills, and Satoko's traps are already everywhere. The main character can barricade herself in by just going there. If I'm going to be there, it won't be such just a simple barricade. I'm going to use it as a diversion to draw away the enemy's main force and then launch a surprise attack. Drawing the enemy into deep and attacking from behind when their defenses are light is a rudimentary tactic for ambush and counterattack. Repelling them at the beachhead is the height of hard-headedness. Oh, me and Satoko are so cool! But Keiji and I are left out. Then all of us will be the main characters. We'll all fight them off together. There you go. That's better. <laughs> now that we're all in on it, it's like this is the club member versus an evil organization, huh? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what kind of bad person this is, but I feel sorry for her and her friends. Though I don't know how powerful they are. <laughs> Fighting face to face is one thing, but if we use our knowledge of the terrain, they have no chance of winning. If they want to defeat us here in Hinamizawa, they'll need to beat. Bring Bring an overlord class army to bear. That will fight you for even that. <laughs> oh, it's getting into unbelievable territory. Mion laughed and everyone nodded along. Amazing. I'm starting to think that if we try our best, we can defeat even the mountain dogs. If we fight directly, we'll be taken down immediately, even if we use a surprise attack. But if we set traps, and if we have enough of them, who knows? See, Rika? Your friends are very reliable! You're right. I don't know why I never told them anything until now. Even if it's something you can't do alone, you can do it with all your friends! Even if only a miracle can make it happen, if we all try our hardest, it can be done easily. That's what a miracle is. My heart
heart's pounding. What is this emotion? I feel like nothing is impossible if I work together with them. Han, you told me that in a different world they defeated the worst scenario of all. The one where Tepe comes home. I don't remember, but something tells me deep inside that that exact same kind of miracle is about to happen in this world too. Me, me and everyone else too. We want a lot more ideas. How can we defeat this conspiracy? Please tell me a lot more. What was that? I'd only asked for Tamatake. But Irie had come with him. Irie must be bothered by what I told him this morning, but he can't come to a conclusion on his own, so he wants Tamatake to listen to me too. After saying that he wouldn't interrupt us, Irie sat down a little distance away. What is going on with the Mion things? I heard from Dr. Irie. Why are you suspicious of Takano? She knows better than anyone that your death would cause a disaster. Besides, Takano has been good to you and Satoko, right? And to say this about her now, don't you think that's a little ungrateful? I told you you shouldn't have gone to him. He's the lovesick idiot. I expected this from Tomotake. If I was in the same mood as it this morning, I probably wouldn't have continued. But having expected this, I'm able to continue without getting upset. Tomotake... Please be honest with me. I want you to really think about it, too. Of course Takana wouldn't kill me under normal circumstances, but can you absolutely guarantee that she would never do so? What do you mean? Takano has devoted her life to the research of the syndrome. Isn't that true? Y yeah Just between you and me, she's the most important person at this institution. Director Irie's position is just a formality, and Takano is the one who's really leading the research. This is supposed to be a secret, but the syndrome was discovered by her grandfather. Takano respects him greatly, and she opened the Irie Institute so she can continue and complete his research. So, how does she feel now about being told that the project will be shutting down within three years? Takano even went to Tokyo and requested an extension, but it was denied, right? Couldn't you say then that the meaning of her life is being denied? Don't you think she's hurt? Rika, where did you hear all that? Tomatake went silent for a moment. He must have realized that I'm not just saying random things. It is true that Takano went to the board of directors and that she was evaluated extremely poorly. According to what I've heard, they really ridiculed her work. She was told that her research project was a waste of money. She's been acting normally, but I think she was really hurt by it, yeah. See? So how can you be so sure that she won't be desperate, thinking that her research is going to be shut down anyway? No, no, not Takano. That's impossible. What is with Neon? <laughs> this must be a bug. That's the same thing Irie said. He kept saying it was impossible, yet he couldn't deny it completely. He repeated the same phrase over and over to refute that possibility. In fact, even though we know Takano's the enemy, we can only guess at her motive. The only way to find out is to tie her down and make her confess. But there is meaning in making Tomotake suspicious of Takano. 
It's even important to do that so he'll become my ally. Of course, this is also a strategy decided by our, devised by our club leader. It's rather a scary thing to imagine, but Takana won't gain anything from your death. I can understand her becoming desperate, but she has self-control. Time heals all wounds. Isn't it easier to deceive the heartbroken? Deceive? What do you mean? There we go. Tomitake, if I die, something terrible will happen, right? An emergency manual will be executed, and the whole village will be destroyed. Eh? Huh? Uh, <laughs> it, is that right? I, I had no idea. Tomitake isn't good at covering his lies. It shows that he's bad at hiding things since he's inna innately honest. Dude, you're the first one to go in this scenario every single time, so I want I would stop fucking around. Which makes him a nice person. Except really stupid. I'm gonna say once again, because, yeah, when I go on a date with somebody and they tell me they like evil rituals and they, they get off on reading about torture, yeah, that definitely turns me on. Irie told me already. I don't want to waste time, so let's be open about this, okay? The emergency manual is the last resort. So, if it actually... If it's actually executed, it'll be a disaster, right? Tomotake seemed to be wondering if he should confirm the existence of the emergency manual. But the fact that Irie had already told me about it, combined with me being the Queen Carrier, prompted him to confirm it. Albeit hesitantly. Yeah, it will be a disaster. It's not easy to erase an entire village. We'll have to cross several dangerous bri bridges, and it's not humane even if it becomes necessary. It truly will be a disaster. I'll be straight with you. Someone will benefit from that situation. No way. There can't be. There won't be any gains. It'll develop into a hunt for blame, and in the worst case scenario, the problem might expand past Tokyo and into the government. In which case? There's someone who will benefit from that commotion, isn't there? If the emergency manual is executed, there will be someone forced to sign off on it. And afterwards, they'll start an investigation into the people who allowed the situation to get to that point. To be specific, those in charge of organizing the EDA Institute. Won't those manipulators be forced to take the blame and be driven out of Tokyo? Huh. I, I'm not sure. There's a limited number of posts. People are constantly vying for them. So would it be that strange if there was someone hoping to steal a seat by lighting a fuse on this dangerous bomb we call the emergency manual? They can remain hidden in a safe place and smugly fill the empty seat after everything's blown up. Huh. Hmm. All this is what Neon suggested. She didn't know a thing about Tokyo, yet she struck its course so hard even Tomotaki was shaken. Mian is the greatest commander and strategist our club could ever have. Tomotaki folded his arms, or she just reads enough manga. He's starting to lose his cool. I think he realizes that what I'm saying isn't mere nonsense. It's true that a big shot in Tokyo just passed away. He left a power vacuum. And there's a political struggle going on. God damn it, it's political! <laughs> oh, I loved this story, and then it became political. Why? Why? Even the EDA's Institute client, the Alphabet Project, has it, had its board of directors purged and reformed. So there's been talk of immediately shutting down the research in order to make an example of the EDA Institute since it was supported by the old faction. So if I die and the emergency manual is executed, the Institute and the board of directors behind it, as well as the faction that supports them, will be held responsible. 
Normally, the syndrome and other dangerous bombs associated with it are safe because only Tokyo knows about them. But when there's an enemy within Tokyo itself, Hinamizawa becomes a bomb that's all too easy to detonate. Uh, that... Is that something you made up, Rika? Is it a fabrication? Or is it the truth? Uh, I, I don't know. But if I think about what's going on in Tokyo, I guess it is possible for some people to think things like that. Tomatake, you're a good person. You're a very good person who believes in his close friend. So I know that if I say these things to Tomatake, you'll never accept them. But I have to bring this up with First Lieutenant Tomatake, auditor for the Iria Institute. You aren't singing. Uh, are you saying that it's Takano? Yes. Her request was denied, as was her own life. Not only that, she was denounced by the board of directors, so she's very hurt. You should know that, since you're always with her, Tomotake. Uh, is there any chance... That someone seeking to use the heartbroken Takane approached her and instigated her into action. People who are hurt often open their hearts to whoever claims to understand them. Someone like that might have approached Takano to start something that will lead to chaos in Tokyo. Tomatake insisted that Takano would never do that. He repeated it a few more times, but then he fell silent again. Tomatak is an adult. He must have experienced some heartbreaking events himself. That's why he can understand that Takano's very hurt and that it's possible that someone's using her. Why? She's not being you. I mean, sure, she might be used, but she willingly says yes to murdering 2,000 people. Do not even try to gain sympathy for her. You're always you're, you're trying very hard, Story. You are trying very hard, but you cannot have what happened in the last chapter happen and and think for a sliver of a moment that I'm going to have any sympathy for that murderous bitch. And if she has a happy ever after, I will hate this novel and all the time I wasted on it. I understand what you want to say. I should clear some issues first before I can truly trust Takano, huh? Tomatake. I'll get in touch with both, both Okunogi from the Mountain Dogs and the Tokyo office to see if there's been suspicious reports regarding Takano lately. The Mountain Dogs specialty is counterintelligence after all. No, the Mountain Dogs are on Takano's side. What? what? This is someone who persuaded Takano. Of course they've taken measures for the mountain dogs as well. That isn't possible. The mountain dogs are a special counterintelligence unit. Even if there was a collaborator in the Institute, it would be very difficult so long as they were attending to their duties. But if the mountain dogs themselves were, can that be? Huh, but... Tomatake, please look both into the Takano and the Mountain Dogs. Iri is on my side, but he doesn't know too much about Tokyo. What is with the sprites? That's true. I'm just a researcher. I know my position is just a formality for the convenience. That's why I can't clear Rika's suspicions by myself. I understand. I've been told that there's a possibility the Institute could become rebellious. That's the reason why I'm here. I'll start investigating Takano and the Mountain Dogs right away. Thank you for believing me. This is the first time you actually have. I've been laughed away in many worlds. But Tomotake finally listened to me. He will be a very strong ally in the fight against Takano. Also... I'm grateful for my friends who prepared me to talk to him. 
I got information on the current situation from Irie, had my friends analyze it, and because of that, managed to get Tomotaki to listen. Just as Hanyu said, I couldn't have done anything if I kept thinking about it all alone. But after talking to my friends, things are already changing. Actually, I'm going into hiding starting today. Mian's house has a secret basement that's perfect for that. I haven't talked to Mian about it yet, but I think she'll understand my request now. So if you find anything, please get in touch with her. Starting today, please act like I've gone missing. Understood. I think that's safest too. I'll act like I usually do. Oh, but... Aksa! So people don't grow suspicious. Though I'll be careful, of course. Dr. Irie, please act as normal as well. But always be on your guard. Uh, I understand. I'll be very cautious. Tomotake, please be careful yourself. I have a feeling you might be assassinated within a few days. Uh. This is the part he has never taken seriously. Please. Hear what I'm saying. Okay. I'll be extra careful. Thank you. Then Tomotake turned around all of a sudden. Iri and I sensed something odd from his behavior and grew tense. Then, we heard some footsteps. We've been so careless. Did someone overhear us? Did Takano and her people hear what we were saying? I will never forget that laugh as long as I live. What is with the sprites? Hello, hello. What an interesting group. Dr. Irie, Tomatake-san, and Rika. I've been to Hinamizawa quite often, but I've never seen you three together before. Oh, hello, Oishi. Huh? Is today the meeting day for Watch Nagashi? It's still so early. Irie tried to change the subject, but obviously Oishi had heard everything. What? Tomotake's from Tokyo is okay, but it's too early for Oishi from the police department to get involved. Things are already complicated. Why does she have to show up now? Anyway, this isn't good. Well, when I went to your house, Hojo-san told me you were here. And I happened to run into your secret meeting. Sorry to bother you, though. <laughs> the air froze, leaving only silence. The way Oishi is speaking makes it obvious that he's trying to sniff things out. I bet he only heard a part of our conversation, so he still can't grasp exactly what we were talking about. That's why he's trying to make us confess the whole thing. What is with those sprites this chapter? Come now, don't look at me like that. I'm getting embarrassed. Well... I brought someone with me today. Some Rika would love to see again. I wonder if you remember Rika. Because if you don't, he might even start crying. <laughs> what? Who? I can only think of one person. But did he ever come here in June 1983? But who else would come visit me? Come on in. Oishi encourages a... What the fuck? I've never seen that word in my life. He looked a lot more mature than the last time I saw him. Uh, Aksa! Thanks for remembering me, Mika. <laughs> you won't tell me to go back to Tokyo this time, will you? Uh, Aksa! Aksa! What is with the sprites? I remember how you helped me. Or rather, maybe I forgot at some point. But if I forgot about it completely, I would regret it. So I recalled it. You told me to call Yuki. And because I did, she avoided getting in an accident. You saved her life. And I'm here now out of gratitude. I feel like I've forgotten about it for a very long time. 
But now I finally remember. Sorry to make you wait for so long. <laughs> That's right! You made me wait forever! And now you show up in this final world! You laid it to the last minute! How dare you! Aksa! Aksa! I'm your ally no matter what. This Tomatake thing is b messing with me. I'll believe everything you tell me. And I will defeat whoever is trying to kill you. Aksa remembered some strange things as she talked to me. He remembered the sad world where he lost his wife working on the kidnapping case. He forgot about me because of the despair and only remembered her afterwards. He regretted not being able to do anything for me. That memory from a different world brought Aksa here. Aksa calls himself my ally. That means a lot to me since I never thought I'd have any allies at all. I could only bury my face in Aksa's chest and cry. Oh, it's so cute. Why is Tomatake? I haven't seen anything. I don't know anything about you having such a young wife here in Hinamizawa when your wife's back in Tokyo. Nope, nope, don't know a thing. Oishi san, no, this isn't what you think. Aksa. 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 I complained that I couldn't defeat Takano alone. Hanyu admonished me. She told me if we put our strength together and all believed in the same thing, we could make a miracle happen. I didn't believe her. But after I talked to Irie, my friends, and Tomotaki, things were getting better and better. And now Aksa's here too! Was Aksa supposed to be coming back? Or is this a miracle? Miracles do occur. This man never helped me, even once before, yet he might be my most dependable ally. Now he's back and he's telling me he's my ally no matter what. See? It happens! Miracles really do occur. You're right. We can make them happen. If we keep putting our strength together, do you think even more miracles will happen? Then... Do you think we can made, make a miracle happen and defeat the curse of 1983? Yes. Because we can smash through June of 1983 only by putting everyone's strength together. Hanyu, who used to be just a bystander, is now persuading me. She is admonishing me for pretending to fight while I too was actually just a sulky bystander. Are you okay, Vika? <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. Seeing you brought back so many memories that I lost my cool. Meep. I wiped my tears and tried to hide my embarrassment. The Higurashi continued to cry. The Higurashi had been trying to remind me of something very important. I felt like they had taught me something important, and my eyes grew teary again. Now there's two Tomatake. <laughs> there's a bug in this chapter. I'm surprised. I didn't know you had such a wonderful boyfriend. <laughs> Let me introduce, this is so weird, I can't... I'm Momoto Aksa. I work in Case Records Room 7 of the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department's Public Security Bureau. Wow, that's a mouthful. Aren't the Case Record Rooms in Tokyo Public Safety Bureau a secret department on par with the CIR0? Oh. I believe it's a tough secret investigation unit that have su that some have criticized as being secret police. No department would be foolish enough to slap secret onto the name of the sec for a secret division. Real secret divisions have boring names <laughs> meant to fool the average person. That's true for Axo's department too. It's called a reference room, but they don't man manage documents. You seem to know quite a lot about us. I didn't think there'd be someone who knows the true identity of the public safety department. Judging from the conversation you were having, I take it you have your own reasons for that. 
Well, <laughs> I'm into stuff like that. I just happen to know that's all. <laughs> Tomatake, why don't you reveal your identity? Hmm. I, for one, always figured you weren't just some traveling photographer. N no, that is the truth. I just like taking pictures. <laughs> that's all. What a waste of time this conversation is. <laughs> This is the final world after all. Tomatake, get out of my screens! Especially with that angry looking face. Tomatake is the one who is connecting us and Tokyo. But he's my ally just the same. Rika-chan! <laughs> Tomatake and Irie yelled simultaneously. To them it's an extremely important secret and if someone were to find out they'd get eliminated by the mountain dogs. But it's okay now. There's no point of continuing to have suspicions and doubts. I've had enough of that. It's already obvious Tomotake isn't telling the truth, but he's still trying to deny what I just said. Finally. You're Director Irei, right? Thanks for taking care of me when I was injured five years ago. You really did a great job treating my wounds. Ah! Now I remember! No, don't mention it. I only did my job. The clinic's also known as the EDA Institute, right? Yes, AXA! Bring up your detective skills. Uh, well, I mean... Oh my god, Tomatake, get the fuck out of the screen! Come now, Dr. Eri, it's no use. We already heard it all earlier. You were saying that the EDA Institute's client's the Alphabet Project, right? I don't need to hear it from you, I already know everything. Up until recently, Room 7 was investigating the men behind it and their means for funneling vast sums of money. The Alphabet Project was one of their tunnels. Axe is holding the top secret document he got his hands on a few days ago. Good boy. This document records how certain people were given public funds. I love, I love uh, picturing this scene. Uh, detective. Uh, like, I don't know exactly what Tomatake is, like, government person. A brain researcher. A police officer. <laughs> a little girl. Are all standing at the shrine. Talking. <laughs> just saying it out loud just, like, makes it even funnier to me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and like someone passing by just like going for a stroll like looks in on them and is like Somebody go get the cops. <laughs> These masterminds claim they were attempting to revitalize Japan by using secret money and secret methods but that was a lie even amongst themselves. The masterminds of these projects were making an enormous amount of profit off of them. If that become public knowledge, Japan would be shaken to the core and the government would be overthrown. That was what they were told and that was the reason why the investigation was discontinued. First of all, I want to tell you one thing. The investigation by Room 7 has been shut down and we're no longer working on this case. So I'm simply telling you what I found in the course of the investigation. I'm on vacation here in Hinamizawa right now. I just want you to know that. <sighs> Tomatake is still trying to hide his identity, but Irie isn't. He must have made up his mind since Aksa already knows about the Alphabet Project. Baby! We already know that they've been using tunnels to move vast sums of money to research institute in Shibone known as the Irie Institute. Also... The EDA Institute has a different name here in parentheses, the EDA Clinic. It also lists that the head of the EDA Institute is a lieutenant colonel from the SDF. Kyosuke EDA. A lieutenant colonel? D Dr. Irie, you're in the SDF? No! I'm not. Tomatake, let me tell them. Putting our clients aside, we aren't doing anything shady. 
Let's not hide anything. It'll only make Oishi more suspicious. Ine is right. Oishi will help us. I'm starting to think, feel like even Oishi could be our ally. That would be incredible. Would you get out of the way? Okay. God damn it, Tomotake! Get out of the sky! At least this time it's talking about you, so it's less confusing. Tomotake finally gave in and admitted everything. In his place, I explained to them the existence of the Hinarizawa Syndrome, the EDA clinic that established to research it. What's special about myself, and finally about the invisible conspiracy that resolves around it. Oishi was very surprised to hear about all this, but Aksa told him to calm down so he listened quietly. Sin since Aksa belongs to a special unit, he wasn't too surprised. He kept nodding, saying that it's all very possible. This is working out great for me! Just as you say, Rika, there's a good chance there are some people who are planning something like that. Oishi, what are they, s what they are saying is well within the realm of possi the possible. Huh. This feels like the plot of a novel. Fourth wall break! Uh, but if it's true... Hmm. Compared to Aksa, who has a flexible mind, Oishi's having a hard time understanding such unrealistic stories. He'll probably need at least three cigarettes before he can digest what he just heard. I think Takano is suspicious. But there's no proof... I was asking Tomotake to investigate so I can confirm my suspicions. Oishi, can you arrest and detain Takano on a separate charge? Hmm, I may lose my retirement money for that, but it could be done, I guess. There are some counterintelligence members from the Mountain Dogs at the police station. Even if you try, Oishi, there will be pressure from within the department. Tomotake! I'll conduct an investigation on Takano, so if possible, can you leave it to me? I don't want anyone to get suspicious. Dude, you're in love with her. No. You're right. If Takano's investigation can only be done by Tomotake's institution, then the police shouldn't bother him. Besides, I have a feeling this thing is a lot bigger than we think. Oishi, I don't mean to sound rude, but maybe you should stay out of this. Aksa, what do you mean by that? Just like you told me earlier, you're retiring this year, right? You've worked hard for many years. You're about to collect your pension. Money is important. You'll need it to pay off your house and you need money for life after retirement. But this hill's too dangerous to climb. My instincts are telling me that at the end of this, this case will be classified as if it didn't take place at all. In other words... Unless I'm prepared to lose everything, I better pull myself out of this, right? That's what you're telling me, ain't it? Yep. I know I'm not in a position to tell you that. But I've been involved in cases that are much different from regular police work. So, what I'm saying now comes from experience. There's no Tomotake! Oishi was no fool. He was also an adult and smart in a real sense. If he only listened to his pride, he would yell at Aksa for insulting him. But what Aksa's saying is true. Oishi's pension is a big deal for him. People live far beyond their retirement. <laughs> Depends on when they retire. They still have 10 or even 20 years left after that. Their pension is the basis for that second life. God damn it, Tomatake, go away! A pension is not ordinary money. It's very, very valuable. People receive their pension for working hard on many days and windy days and even during moments when their bosses give them a hard time. Even Oishi has mumbled on occasion that he's going to quit and look for a new job. Yet he endured and quietly did the unreasonable work asked of him. He's endured far more th than his salary merited. He's worked like that for a long time and now he's finally about to retire. He's finally about to collect his long-awaited pension, and also his long-awaited conclusion to this mystery. It's not about the amount of money itself. It's about having value placed on what you've done with your life. 
So if one were to cause a scandal, the punishment for that would be placed on his pension. One some such deplorable event can erase Oishi's entire life as a policeman. That's not something that can be treated lightly. Axe is still young. Even if he loses his job, he'll be able to find a new one. But Oishi's too old. The repayment of his mortgage was planned around his pension. Oishi is a grown-up's grown-up. I like that. And that's why he can't do anything reckless. Axon knows that. And that's why he said that Oishi should back down. Oishi understands it too. So Aksa had to ask him that tough question in order to find out how strong Oishi's commitment was. I've been awfully slow at paying back my loan. All because I wanted to hold on to some spending money. Even though I would have saved in on interest if I just paid a bit more earlier. But I just wanted to gamble and drink. If I'd lived my life so I didn't have to depend on my pension in my old age, I could jump right onto this case. Oishi's fists were trembling. That's how he sheds his tears. But... But... I'm an officer until the moment I retire. No, even that don't matter. I promised in front of his grave. I promised that old man that I found out who killed him. I promised to stay a police officer, officer until I arrest his murderer. In other words... Me being a police officer ain't the issue here. What matters is that I keep my officer spirit until I find that murderer, even if I'm fired. But I... Uh, am I afraid to be fired? Am I afraid to lose my pension? Yeah, I am! It ruins my plans for the future. I need a lot of money for them. My dream is to live a leisurely life in Hokkaido, work on a vegetable farm, have fun in Sisukino, and take a ballroom dancing lessons. Nice. But why am I afraid? Is my officer's spirit so weak as all that? I've dreamt of uncovering the truth behind the series of deaths in Hinamizawa. And the door of that truth I've sought for is so long, right here in front of me. Damn it! Why can't I just throw away my badge? Why can't I stop care- just retired today? Damn it, damn it, damn it! Nobody could say anything in response to Oishi. He's at a crossroads. The crossroads of a person who'd worked so hard and so humbly for so long. How could the young people who know nothing about what he's had to go through say anything at all? You are... A friend of the departed construction site manager, right? Yeah. He was a friend, a brother, and a father to me. Although it's only a formality, I am the director of the ADA Institute. If the conspiracy that surrounds Rika is exposed, I will be the one who takes the blame. Isn't that right, Tomotake-san? Uh, his position exists for exactly that purpose. To the Institute as a whole, EDA is simply to cover for Takano's research. Tomotake, of course, knows about that, and even EDA has started to realize it. Even if Irie hadn't done anything wrong, he would have to take the blame as the person in charge of the Institute. That was how every organization purged itself. By forcing someone to take the blame and reshuffling members. That's why leaders get more money. When it's all over, I will tell you everything about the series of mysterious deaths. I actually have an obligation to remain silent for the rest of my life. But you'll t let me tell him, won't you, Tomotake? Ha! <laughs> I didn't hear anything. As an honest man, Tomotake can't say yes. So pretending to ignore it was the best he could do. No, that's not that. You can tell the brave Kurado Oshi about it. The one who found the courage to help you. The cowardly could. Kurado Oishi, the one who didn't want to lose his pension, don't deserve to hear the truth. He faced a dilemma. Even though the truth behind this death he sought so hard was right in front of him, he couldn't just accept it with his head held high. To understand what he's going through, one would have to live the life he did. His dilemma is very vast and very heavy. We know. Can I have some time to think about this. 
I really do want to find the truth and put evil behind bars. I, I just need to time to gather my courage. Could you grant me that? Why is he even asking? Nobody here will force him to make up his mind. Of course, I won't either. However, why she needs someone's approval. Why she's still passionate about his work as a police officer, yet he isn't brave enough to take on this case. He wants somebody to forgive him for that. But nobody can do that. And nobody can stop Oishi from crying. Yes! I will grant you that time! Hanyu? How long has she been there? Hanyu survived. I didn't see her come in. But then again, she's always around. Hanyu's the garden deity of Hinomizawa, after all. I'll grant you some time to make your decision. You have been honest, and you've been tough on yourself until today. Your life is not to be taken lightly, and that's why you're having such a hard time deciding. One should never be proud of careless decisions of brute courage. A careful judgment by a person who has lived a worthy life, like you, that's what's worth being proud of. She might sound arrogant to us, but that was exactly what Oishi needed to hear. Right. Who among us has the right to admonish Oishi, the eldest one here? No one. No one should be able to. Nobody but one. The one who has been protecting humans for over a thousand years. Hanyu. No matter if you decide calmly or courageously, I will praise you. As long as your decision was well made. I've never met you before, but thank you. That makes me feel better. Thank you for giving me cobwood like me the time of day. If it was me, I would have asked Oishi to be my ally and asked for him his help, but that wouldn't have reached his heart. Wanting help is my selfish request. I don't know anything about the life he lived, and that's why my words wouldn't reach him. But Hanyu's words did. Hanyu has never told me this, but I can tell she's been watching Oishi since the day he was born. She's been watching all that he went through. That's why she can say that. And why what she said could reach him. Only Hanyu can do that. Dr. Irie, there's only one thing. Please tell me one thing. Sure. Ask me anything. I've long suspected that the Sonazaki family was pulling the strings in the old man's murder case. Am I right to think that? There we go. No, you're not. You're wrong. We can explain everything about the series of deaths in Hinamizawa. Ah, uh, see. Oishi pretended to scratch his head. For so long, he pursued the case with that belief. Yet someone deeply involved was telling him he missed the mark. So he must be feeling at least somewhat frustration. What Irie said wouldn't be enough. So I have to continue. Oishi, none of the curses of Oyashiro-sama were done in secret by the villagers. The Sonazaki family, the three families, and the other villagers, none of them are involved. Not true. Kind of. They were only misunderstandings, misinterpretations, coincidences, tragedies, and comedies. What does Rika think about who killed her parents? The real identity of the curse of Oyashiro-sama is simply a series of misinterpretations. It only looks like the villagers are acting in secret. So all the information I gathered so far about the family is worthless? <laughs> Heads of the Sonazaki family have a secret precept. They must always act as if they command even natural disasters. The Sonazaki, the Sonazaki family knows nothing. Moreover, they are even afraid of the incidents that occur every year. But in order to maintain their dignity, they act as though they're the ones behind everything. Oh my goodness. I see. Oh, wrong person. It all makes sense now. If that's true, then that audio woman damn 
damn it, she sure said dumb things to mislead me. You're telling me the truth, ain't ya? Yes, I am. It's written in the Furude family secret scrolls, too. Do you want to see? <laughs> I have no idea what Oishi thinks is so funny. Nobody can tell here what's going through his mind. Except the girl who has watched over human beings for over a thousand years. I can understand why you're so happy. What? What do you mean? The thought that you don't have to hate anyone anymore is a very, very welcome concept. <laughs> oh no. The Sonozaki family is still a vile organization with its claws all over Sushibona City. That doesn't change. Thank you. I've been stabbed by one of them before, you know. They may not be responsible for the deaths, but they are still my enemies. That's all still true, but I just feel happy. None of us can tell if what Hanyu is saying is right. Why she believed the Sonazaki family was behind it all. Now that he learned it's not, I'm sure he feels like everything he stand for has been made meaningless. But if Hanyu says that's not the case, to hate someone must be a such a painful thing. I don't know. I hate Takano and it's not painful. Get out of the sky! <laughs> Oishi left with a cigarette in his mouth saying he wanted to cool off a little. We won't get anywhere until we know if Takano's guilty or not. So we won't be able to act until we hear the report from Tamatake-san. I don't know why Rika is so suspicious of Takano. Personally, I feel bad for her. But what she says me said makes sense, too. Rika's an important person. And we can't let anyone suspicious get near her. Tamatake is making it sound like he's going to prove Takano's innocence. I guess I can't blame him since he's in love with her. To be honest, I'm also hoping that Takano isn't guilty. Ugh. Who do you think killed your parents? Seriously, did they tell you it was the syndrome? I had a friendship with her. I trusted her for over a hundred years. But Hanyu says that Takano is guilty. If something pops out when we poke her, then the question is how well Tomotake can catch it. To get people to help me, I have to find proof of Takano's guilt. So I just have to trust Tomotake for now. Tomotake, please be careful. If she is guilty, then you'll be in danger too. I understand. I'll move to a new hotel without letting the Institute know. I should probably leave Hinamizawa immediately, but if Takano is guilty, that would backfire. That's pretty tough, yeah. It's a cardinal rule to act normally during a secret investigation. Would you prefer to stay with me? No, that's alright. It's fine, I'll be careful. But Rika's safety is the priority here. What should we do? What should we do? Hanyu, what should we do? Using Shogi as an example, you're like an unprotected king! As soon as Takano gets a hold of you, the game is over! One of the most important rules of Shogi is to guard the king first, right? Yes. Today is Thursday. Watch in Nagashi's in three days. You need to hide somewhere. Nobody can find you, at least until then. Any idea where? Didn't you just say? Didn't she say this earlier? Where she was gonna go? I think you should ask Mion! That's true. The Sonozaki's family underground storehouse would be an ideal place to hide. So Teleko should go with you. If I leave Satoka behind, they'll question her about my whereabouts. She may be in danger, too. That means I'll have to tell the truth to at least Satoka and Mion. 
that the comic plot we discussed wasn't just fiction. Still, I always seem to underestimate the reliability. It really is beyond my imagination. I need to talk to them. I have a feeling they'll believe me. They're my steadfast allies, after all. We're going into hiding for a while. There's a perfect place for that at Mion's house. Will you really be safe there? Yes. It's like an air raid shelter. It is everything we need. We can easily stay there for about a month. The Sanazaki's family underground storehouse has every basic necessity, in case someone actually had to live down there to some complication or another. Isn't there like torture weapons down there? Mion has mentioned before that it's like a unique vacation house. I don't know how you can call a place with a torture room a vacation house though. I don't know how long my investigation into Kano will take. But as soon as I find out something, I'll call Mion's house. Is that okay? That works fine. To tell you the truth, the mountain dogs have a bug on Rika's home phone for security reasons. So that works better either way. Meep. So somebody has been listening to all my personal conversations? N no It's set up so they can tune in, but that doesn't mean they're listening to every normal conversation. They only do it when they have a security drill. That happens a few times a year. I bet my phone at the clinic's being wiretapped too, huh? Well, yes. That's because of the purpose of the facility, though. Please understand. Excuse me. How do they actually do that? Rika's landline branches off. Do you remember the little shack behind the shrine? The line leads into there, which is where they wiretap it. Usually, there's no one there, but once the mountain dogs receive orders to guard her, there will be two agents recording conversations in there at all time. Of course, they don't usually record anything. Is there a security drill scheduled in the near future? Or maybe orders to guard her? Security drills take place in January, April, July, and October. So there's no drill this month. Orders to guard her are only given when they anticipate an emergency, but they haven't been given even once since the Institute was established. Who gives those orders? The director does, which is me. But Takano is a surrogate director, so she can send out orders too. If Takano really is the person who wants to kill Rika, then she'll use the mountain dogs to spy on her. That's very possible. In other words, if people start to go in and out of that shack, it means that Takano has made her move. So we could take that as proof that tensions are building around Rika, right? I don't know if that would prove that Takano's behind it. But we can take it as a sign that danger is approaching. Indeed. Regardless of whether Takano's guilty or not, that's what it means. As long as we keep our eyes on that shack, Rika will stay safe and secure. That's a great idea. But there's one problem, Rika. If there are no lights on in the house at night, it'll be obvious to everyone that nobody's home. Takano doesn't even have to wiretap your phone. As soon as she sees the house, she'll realize you're skipping school and ran away. You're right. And that puts Tomotake, who's investigating Takano, in a tight spot. We'll have to think of something to counteract that. So we're dealing with having to observe the wiretapping shack like an ex I was saying earlier. Then there's one problem with having to keep the lights on at your house. It's also a fact that it's better for Axa to stay in the village if I put all three together and mix them up, I get. Oh, I have an idea. Oh, no. You aren't thinking about letting Axa stay at my house, are you? No, absolutely not. My house is such a mess. It smells. It's filthy. I can't let Axa stay in there. No! Oh, Axa stay never! I said no! No, 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 no! Why are you making... 
making such a fuss, Rika. Meep. I lost me cool there for a moment. Meepa. Jeez. Just because Hanyu's insisting, okay? It's true that if Rika's house ends up empty, there won't be any lights on at night. And leaving them on would be even more suspicious. Ah, uh, Axa. Oh, uh, Meep. What do you think of staying at my house while I'm gone? I see. That's a great idea. As long as it's okay with you, Rika, let's do that. Axa seems to think it's a pretty good idea. Am I selfish for wanting him to get a little embarrassed about staying at my house? Well, Rika has a crush on the adult. That's okay. Little girls get crushes on superhero men. I have a crush on him. I'm not a little girl, but... You know. I should be esteemed of myself. Oh. Tell him attack it. Get out of the screen. Not everything is about you, man. Everything is set. Tomataki is going to get in touch with his colleagues in Tokyo and start an investigation on Takano. That's all. That's all we can do from our end. Irie is going to live his normal life. To act normally after something like that would be pretty difficult, but there really isn't anything else for him to do right now. Takano's sly. She'll never let Irie ruin her plans. Actually, Irie only comes into the picture after Takano's been exposed. Oishi didn't say he would help, but he said he wouldn't interfere with us. In fact, there are some people with ties to the mountain dogs at the police department, too. It's probably best if Oishi acts normally like Irie is. I'm going to tell Satoko the truth and hide at Mian's house for a while starting today. I don't know how long I'll have to hide, but it'll be at least something until something happens. Aksa's going to stay at my house and make it look like I'm homesick. If something happens, coming all the way from Okonomiya would take too long. It feels much better to have him stay in the village. Everything will begin only once Tomotake finds out something. Irie says he hopes things will get moving soon, but I don't think we need to worry about that. They will try to kill Tomotake on the night of the Watch Nagashi on Sunday, two days from today. That has never changed in many, many worlds. So that's definitely their plan. In uh, other words, even if Tomotaki doesn't find anything, the wheels will start turning in two days. I had warned Tomotaki again to be extremely careful. But still, if I still get cur killed, I'll curse your family for seven generations after I die. Yeah, that's right. It's already getting dark. Everyone went home except for Aksa. I'm still thinking about how to tell Satoko about Aksa, and also about what's to come. Worrying about it won't solve anything! Rika, you have a bad habit of underestimating your friends. But... How can she believe that what we talked about at school today is actually real? How can she believe me when I tell her that my life is in danger? Her life. In addition, I'm bringing home this guy she's never met before! Don't you think that Satoko will believe you? I don't know, but it's possible that she won't. Oh! So Satoko isn't your friend, is she? What? What Han and you just said startled me. It was kind of a scary thing to hear, even though she was saying while wearing her smile. I know Satoko's one of us! I think she will believe you and become your ally against Takano. But you're saying you can't trust her. That's like saying Satoko isn't your friend. If she isn't even your friend, then why waste your time telling her about it? Oh. Well, let's just leave Satoko behind and go to Mia's house by ourselves. Just the two of us. Well, what are you saying? That's nonsense. Satoko's my best friend and...
Han you, you're stepping up your game, girl. If you don't think it's worth telling her the truth, then that's it. You just think a fr best friend is a stray cat that you feed every day. I'm actually surprised to learn that you've been letting Satoko live with you when you think of her like that. I didn't say that. Satoko's my best friend. My very best. That's mean. She's even closer to me than you are. But you don't believe she won't believe. It's the same as spouting your complaints at a street cat that you feed every day. You know the cat can't do anything, and knowing that you still complain to her, and that's all your relationship is. Poor Satoko. She believes you're her best friend, but you don't feel the same way. Oh, Damn you! I tried to slap on you, but I couldn't touch her. My hand went through her cheek and hit only in the air. I can't believe she made herself incorporeal again. Hanyu disappeared, saying, oh, in a teasing manner. I'm upset, but I can totally understand what she was getting at. Will your roommate agree? I'll make her agree. Satoko has nothing to do with this conspiracy, but she lives with me. She's going to end up getting involved in any way. For Satoko's sake, I have to explain this to her. Should I wait outside? No. I think it'll be better with you. To have you with us so she doesn't think it's a joke. If I can't explain it properly, can you help? Sure. I will. Tomatake, please go away. I went up to the second floor with Aksa. To be honest, I couldn't even imagine how to start bringing it up. But even Han, you made fun of me. I can't hesitate. Tomatake, I'm gonna reload really quick. He's still there. I made up my mind and walked into the room and was surprised. My messy room is all cleaned up. Huh? Satoko is packing her pajamas and towels into a duffel bag. It's as if she's going on a camping trip. Satoko? I'm home. Here, I got your luggage ready too. We can't just borrow toothbrushes and towels from Yeon-san, you know? Besides, we can't let some strange man stay in this messy room either. This is why I always tell you to tidy things up around here. I blinked in surprise. I don't understand why Satoko already knows what's going on. If she saw me, Iri, and Tomotake talking behind the shrine and a sh with Oishi and a strange man, she'd be sure to get curious. Satoko must have overheard our conversation. Not only that, she packed our luggage and cleaned our room, which means she already knows Aksa is going to stay in this house. She must have come home in a hurry to get things done. So it wasn't just a storyline for some comic, was it? Meep. You know, that's what I don't like about you, Rika. Huh? Have I ever doubted you before? I always thought that I was your best friend, that you would count on me before anyone else. I am sorry. Satoko doesn't seem that angry. Rather, she seems shocked that what we talked about at school isn't real. She isn't really that upset. But this is exactly what Hanyu said. I thought Satoko was my best friend, yet I couldn't trust her completely. Having realized this, I apologized. Satoko turned around as if to tell me there was no time for apologies. I think she accepted it. As the proof of that, she's getting things ready to go to Mion's house. Thank you, Satoko. Um, Aksa-san, is it? I don't know how you and Rika know each other, but if you're Rika Zala, then you're my too. You may call me Satoko Hojo. Nice to meet you. I'm Aksa. The conspiracy surrounding Rika runs pretty deep, and it's not easy to explain. She was afraid you'd reject her if she confessed to everyone, so please try to understand how she felt too. Of course I understand! I'm Rika's best friend, you know? She was thinking that I didn't believe her. Who would? I can understand why she'd be afraid. You're really mature, Satoko-chan. 
Rika's lucky to have you as her best friend. I'm pretty envious of her. Satoko took Aksa around the house and explained everything. She let him know that their switch for the hot water heater sticks a little and that if the picture on the TV gets messed up, he needs to tap on it. She even told him about... <laughs> She even told him about all the traps she set around the shrine using a secret map of hers. Aksa listened to her dead seriously. What is with Tomatake? Upon seeing them, Taka couldn't help but smile. Hanyu also smiled while watching us. But it felt like she was saying, I told you so. I'm going to pretend I don't notice her. Huh? If our contrarian Satoko believed me this easy, then our simple-minded Mion will believe us mo even more easily. How can you call Mion the greatest tactician, whatever, and also simple-minded? <laughs> I feel like those two don't go together. Keiji doesn't even know how to doubt people, and Reina has sharp instincts, so she'll believe me too. So everyone's going to believe me, huh? Hanyu didn't reply, but she smiled as if she's happy to see I grew a little. Alright, there's plenty of things in the refrigerator. Mika, you're asking him to house it, so why don't you make him dinner for tonight? Besides, just to be safe, perhaps we should go, on, go over to Mion's house a little later. Oh, don't worry, I can handle that myself. chance to serve him your homemade food, Rika! Aww! You really are annoying today! Oh, wait! Satoko, we have to make something good, huh? I have an idea. Can you bring out the large kimchi bottle from the refrigerator? No, not that one. That one says death penalty, not the one that says punishment. Let's make kimchi fried rice today! Aksa, do you like spicy food? Yeah, I love spicy. I knew she was gonna do that. Tomatake, you're like a creepy ghost. Oh, also, the cream puffs in the refrigerator have expired. So let's throw them away. <gasps> what a waste. I heard they're from a famous shop over in Gora. Owls are awfully loud today. Maybe a stray dog's howling somewhere. Night is falling on the 16th of June. The pieces are lining up on the final game board one after another. No, pieces isn't the right word to call them. What? We're gaining reliable allies for this final challenge. Our first key, Tomatake, will be killed in three days. Fate is going to change before that point. Man, that was a long chapter, if that's the end of the chapter. Tama talk! <laughs> please do not- oh. Please do not be a bug for the rest of the game, Tomatake. Please. All right, well, that was a very long chapter, but that's the end of chapter seven. I will see you guys later. Jenny.